Please. We have some uh, some questions here that came from the crowd. I'm going to, they use some big words, and I know there's some people that work in the media here, so I'm going to kind of <laughs> dumb it down a little for those. Uh, one person wants to know, and this is really the question, uh, how do we change the opinions and views of the uh, middle and upper class regarding poverty security issues? I'm going to just kind of... Make them go through this. Yes. Yeah, de definitely. Bring them in. Bring in people from the Chamber of Commerce and from the NSBA and from Sarita and those people and, and have one do it. Yeah. Mind you, you got to find the one who will do it, but you know, convince them that this is a good thing to do. Um, I, I think this to, needs to, you know, it, everyone's kind of like, oh, this is a nonpartisan thing. I think that's crap. Um, you guys need to come out and you guys need to get out here and, and, and come to these things, learn the issues, know what the people that who you are representing are actually going through. And, and if you can do that, then I think you're going to be doing your job well. And if, and if you're not, well, I'll talk to you when I don't have a mic in my face. <laughs> yeah, to further the point, I think empathy is the most powerful weapon here. Thank, give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you all for coming and supporting us. I want to give you a round of applause here. I mean, to some, I or even our radio, our fine radio folks, or Shalima, we may just be talking heads. But behind those heads, I mean, you're, you're seeing it. There's raw emotion on this stage for a lot of people. It, it chokes me up to talk about it right now because although I didn't, I, I stuck happy. It, was, it, it, it weakens you. I mean, my show is from 6 to 9. At 7.30, I'm running on fumes. And I'm, and I'm struggling to get through the day, and I'm drinking three liters of water to get through a shift. And, and that was the reality of it. That's the problem, is that people just can't see the reality of it. What would have been the long term for your job? Five years. Yeah. Five years. Yeah. yeah. I slept on air so many times, it was unreal. And I would run and move to the right, and then come back and try and make sure it's easier. And again, you, you, you had the privilege of telling people why you were slept. One of the things that we always talk about is that people who live in poverty need education to get out of poverty. And one of the things that I've come to this week is, um, yeah, well, that's all well and good, but people in the middle class, upper middle class, um, we need to speak up. We need to not let people get away with crap. We need to talk to our politicians and our families. Um, and when they say, well, that's what those people are like, we need to call them on it. So it's not the people who live in poverty or with oppression that need education, it's us. So that's why I'm here. I, uh, I made the comment about going for a job interview and how terrible I would have been in the middle of this week in a job interview. And I had a few convers. the best part about it was the conversations that started, especially with some of my friends and acquaintances who normally probably wouldn't have talked about this sort of thing and I, I, unfortunately these conversations were at the start of this so I didn't have really good comebacks to you know the usual things you hear about well you know you just just go out and get a job or you know people you know just they're just lazy and they just get these free handouts and stuff and I didn't I didn't have a great comeback to some of those things I was also my brain wasn't working so I didn't have a good comeback uh, but now I have better comebacks to you know imagine you know, not having enough food and your brain's not working properly and trying to go for a job interview or, or going to school in grade three and you're, you know, by the time you're in grade five you're already bottom of the class and you already in your head feel like you're bottom of the class and so you never use that education to succeed. Well, I just ended up with this but it's uh, interesting. I read uh, Toby's blog today. I really loved it and uh, the, the fact of the matter is and I can because I've been around Lauren an awful long time and have a, a sports background. The fact of the matter is, stop talking about it and start doing something. Show me, stop telling me. And that's really it.
why is there poverty? <laughs> and unfortunately, I have the mic, and I'm going to pass it something. There we go. Boy, if we could answer that question, I think we'd be in really good shape. That's the thing that we, we've talked about and all the assumptions that go into what poverty is about. That is probably the question. I wish we had the answer. At least I don't have one. It's such a complex issue. There's so many differing, differing interwoven factors that I don't think you can easily point a finger and say this is why or this is why. And There's been political structures that have tried to to share the wealth around everybody, and that ends up with everybody being in poverty. And I, I don't know how how do we affect the change that that more evenly distributes the wealth, and yet still maintains an environment where where we are growing in, in prosperity as a whole. I, I I think poverty is a multi-causal phenomenon in our society that that revolves around you know race, class, sex gender, whichever, which, whichever you prefer. Um, and at the end of the day, where we are placed inherently, you know, when we are born has a lot to do with it. And I think that's why there's, there's, there's poverty. When, when, when we start out, well, most people are going to be either here, you know, they're going to wind up somewhere on the spectrum. And it's not their fault. It's not their fault at all. It's, it's, it's just the, the cards that they were dealt. And that's what we need to change. That that no matter what the cards are dealt, you know, everybody should be on a on a on a level playing field, and that's where we have issues. And and in a country where we have so many resources, you know, we this should not be occurring. Um, I said in one of my blogs that, you know, and I, and I think this goes back to what somebody said earlier that, you know, this is for people in these positions to realize what 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 it's like. We're not impoverished veterans. There are a lot of impoverished veterans in this town, in, 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 in this world. And uh, for us to understand that, you know, perhaps we can start to hopefully make some of that change and start putting, ma making that inherent playing field a little more leveler. Yeah. 